Hey guys, it's James from the Ag Learning Center. Today we're going to talk about a particular breed of beef cattle that we have here on the grounds this week. We are hosting here this week, we're hosting the uh, Senator Trumas Junior National Show on the grounds this week. So we're going to talk a little bit about them. We're going to talk to some people about the cattle and then we're hopefully going to get out in the barn and see what we can kind of see out there. But just a, a little bit about the Senator Trumas breed. Those cattle origin, originated in Kingsville, Texas, down on the King Ranch, between King Ranch Ford pickups and that kind of stuff. That's kind of where that stuff came from. This breed of cattle is 3 8 Brahmin, 5 8 Shorthorn. They're red, about the color of old Fred here. They can have horns or they cannot have horns. It's kind of a, just kind of happens. These old girls are really good milkers. They have a real high amount of beef production, which translates into pounds of meat to the consumer. They're excellent mothers and they're real easy calving cows. And because of the Brahmin influence in them, they're very tolerant to heat and they're very tolerant to parasites. But because of the shorthorn in them, that makes them where they gain good in the feed yard, in the feed yard, or in the pasture. Now we're going to take a walk out through the barn. We're going to talk to some people and we're going to see what we can come up with today. Go ahead and tell us what your name is and where you're from. Uh, my name is Taylor Terry and I'm from a town north of Dallas, Texas called Denton. Okay. Right, Tyler, we're just going to jump right in this morning, you know, uh, talking about the elephant in the room. Uh, how has COVID-19 affected you, both on a personal level and with regards to showing cattle? So actually this past spring I took an internship to Washington, D.C. and I was working for uh, Congressman Kevin Brady and everything was going great from January and around March you know, things started to get pretty serious and next thing you know I was headed back home. So since March I've been at home and luckily I mean, obviously a national pandemic isn't something that's ideal but it's allowed me to be at home with the cattle more. We have all of our cattle recorded, shot, so in the cattle portion it's helped us get everything recorded and down so we know who's where and what's where. But on the other hand, we also take cattle to the sale barn and with cattle prices being as low as they have been, we've decided to farm raise beef and sell to consumers. Okay. Okay. What's the most important life lesson that you've learned from showing cattle? I think from showing cattle, it teaches you a lot of responsibility. You have to be somewhere at a certain time and especially me taking the leadership role in this organization from a national princess, a queen, I was the vice president of the Juniors Association and the president, kind of working on myself but also working to help others and learning to be selfless. Given what's going on, what do you see the future of the beef industry? So the future right now, I'm seeing a lot of producers deciding if the packers are going to cut prices and not give cattlemen their fair share, that people are going to start doing farm raised beef and selling it off the hoof directly to customers, which I think more people are open to nowadays because they want to know where their beef is coming from. Right now we have 30 head of steers and a lot that we're feeding till slaughter date so we can sell to people in our area. So I think that's a direction that the beef industry is heading for. Okay. Okay. What are your future plans? So right now I'm attending Texas A&M University. I'm majoring in ag economics and my plan is to attend law school. Kind of do possibly some environmental law and I would love to work my way back up to Washington DC. I visited the USDA while I was working there, and that's a place that's really caught my eye. And I joked around, which joked around, but I'm also kind of serious about it. I would love to work at CC Center, Pennsylvania Avenue one day. <laughs> love to do that and kind of take that role on. Okay. Okay. Any regrets in your show career? Would you change anything about show and count? Um, I feel like at a point I was juggling quite a few things. I've shown cattle since I could walk. This is my 21st junior national, so I'm 20 years old. But there was a portion where I kind of stepped back and was focused more on, I was playing a lot of sports and I kind of missed 
a little chunk of my show career and I regret doing that because this is something that I'm actually really passionate about and that I love to do. I love to organize and meet all these people, get cattle shown and have people that want to show parents be here. I want to thank you for taking time to visit with us this morning. Hi guys, we're back out in the barn with Taylor. Taylor, tell us a little about your hair. Yourself, touch all that stuff. Uh, I'm Cooper Cates. I'm 18 years old. I just graduated high school. I've been showing for about 10 years now and I love every second of it. We own a ranch and own about 60 head of cows and we show Sandra Trudis. I'll be attending the Southwestern University in the fall to play football. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's just jump right in, Cooper. Uh, the, the elephant in the room is what COVID has done across the industry and all that stuff. How has COVID affected you as far as on a personal level and with regards to showing cattle? Well, I mean, it's been it's been crazy to say the least. It's your everyday life, everything you're used to, it changed it. I mean, it's as simple as going to restaurants or seeing everybody, it's it's crazy. And so on the showing cattle part, it's actually it's actually saved me. <laughs> I mean, because it's been a safe place I can go to. I mean, I can't go hang out with my friends. I can't go eat. I can't go to amusement parks. I can't do anything. But the barn is where I could go. Yeah, we might not have shows. We not. We might have been at Houston. We had to go home. We nationals nearly got canceled. It, it's crazy, but the barn has saved me. It's been my place to go. It's been my place to get more time with my heifers. So it's been a positive and negative throughout the whole thing. Okay. Okay. What's the most important life lesson that you've learned from Show with Cat? It's not about winning. It's not about winning. I mean, it's a family. We're, we're all a family, and most people get caught up in the banners and the buckles and the "I didn't win this, I didn't win that." It's about doing what you love and loving what you do. That's, that's the biggest thing it's taught me. All right, uh, let's let's get on a broader scale here a little bit. Uh, because of everything that's transpired yes, since sir. the middle of March, uh, what do you see? as a future trend in the beef industry? That's very challenging. I mean, I was actually talking to our executive director, Wade Fields, about that yesterday, and he said, the prices are low, but the meat's going fast. It, it's going to be interesting to see how it transpires over the next few years, whether it's going to be positive or ne negative. I'm hoping it's positive, but we'll have to see. Yes, sir. Okay, so you, you've talked about, where, where are you heading off to school? Southwestern University in Georgetown. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This one's really going to put you on the spot. You're a senior in high school, fixing to go off to college. Uh, if you could change one thing about your show career, what would it be? Honestly, sir, I would not change a thing. I really would not. I can't say I won a bunch of shows. I can't say I won national champions a lot. I would not change a thing. It's it's made me who I am today, and it's going to be why I'm going to be successful in the future. Yes, sir. Thank you for your time. This Thank morning. you. We appreciate it. Uh, we're here with Cooper. Cooper, tell us a little about your hair. Uh, she's a great uh, heifer. She was born this January. She's actually on my very first show heifer. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. If you can change it. See, if you look at her legs, she's a little thin bone. I'd like to pick her up and do her well. Good luck today, Cooper. I appreciate you. All right. All right, guys. We're here with Callie this morning. Uh, Callie, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from. So, I'm 17 years old. I'm from Kingsbury, Texas, and I'm going to be a senior at Navarro High School. Um, I've been actively involved in showing Santa Gertrude's cattle for the past nine years, but I've been around them ever since I was a little girl. And I'm actively involved in 4-H and everything, competing in livestock judging, public speaking, and other events. But cattle is my passion, and that's why I'm here. Okay. Uh, everybody we visited with this morning, we've all addressed the elephant in the room. Uh, the elephant in the room is COVID. Yes, sir. How has COVID affected you both on a personal level and with regards to showing cattle? 
So on a personal level, actually it's given me more time to be around my animals. Actually, and we had we used to have somebody who worked for us all the time to just keep the animals in check. But over COVID and everything that has happened, we ended up losing him, and it was all on me and my mother to take care of the cattle. But it gave me so much time to bond and create, like create a, I guess more natural bond with my animals and work with them every day. I mean, I was out at the barn every day from 7.30 to 11.30 at least, and then back there straight again in the afternoon to feed them. So that was really helpful. But for almost three months, we were stuck at our house. I mean, luckily we had property to go do things. Um, my grand, or my stepdad has a business that in the car dealership deal, and he was able to luckily keep running because they're considered an essential business. So both sides of my family were not didn't get to, didn't have to lose their jobs but i think that with the cattle industry it kind of with at the beginning of it, it was like shut everything down stop it and houston had ended and i was down at the valley and it became chaos and it really i felt really bad for the seniors who were involved in it with all the market animals and everything that was going on but i think now we're at a point where shows are coming back up people are ready to get back out in the ring and that's why this is the biggest national show yet What's the most important lesson that you've learned in the show ring? I think the most important lesson that I've learned in the show ring is that passion will beat anything. I mean, you can, you can be naturally gifted and you can work hard, but if you don't have the passion and the drive and the determination to be there and you don't want to be there, you're not going to succeed in the ring. It takes so much heart to be in the cattle industry and you have to love what you do to be successful at it. And I feel like I carry my passion in everything that I enjoy and when I'm doing it, you can see it on my face that I love it. What do you think with regards to COVID and everything that's going on, all the outlying factors, what is the future of the beef industry? Well, right now, we're struggling with the packing industry and the like meat itself. Um, I think there's some issues with what's going on. People aren't wanting to sell their cattle because the prices are really low. So the demand for meat is higher, the price of meat is higher. And now people are charging more for you to get meat processed. So that's why you're getting less at the auction barn. And there's an issue between the government control over what we're doing and what the ranchers are trying to do and until they can find a way to fix that, right now the beef industry is in a bad place. As far as on the show cattle industry, I think people were worried about trying to get cattle for next year, market animals and stuff like that because they were worried we weren't going to have shows. But as shows are continuing to say, we're a go, let's go, especially down south, more north, everything's shutting down. But down here in Texas, Louisiana area, we're continuing to show. So I think it's thriving down here. But at Morith, I think there's too much government control for them to have a really good show here next year. What does your future look like? Where's Kelly going to school? Well, I have two top schools right now, either Texas A&M University or Oklahoma State University. And I want to major in animal science or double major in animal science in either a business or ag econ. And either... I'm trying, I want to get through my undergrad and see what I like to do the most, but either go to law school or vet school after. What, if there was anything you could change about all the time you've spent on a halter, dragging cattle through the show ring, what would it be? Oh, goodness. Well, I could say I wish I wanted more cattle, but we brought 17 here, so that's a lot. <laughs> um, maybe just with as much cattle as we do haul, have some more time to just relax and have fun and enjoy it. Not that I don't have fun and enjoy it, but sometimes I feel like I'm constantly busy. Um, and I love seeing everybody here and meeting new friends and making memories. And I think that's a huge part of the industry that we're involved in. So maybe just more time. Okay. Kelly, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for sir. coming. Tell us about your family. This is Bahama Mama. She's a donated heifer that I got from Crosswinds, and she was born last year. And she is an absolute puppy dog. She loves to be pet on, and she thinks she's a princess. Anything you could change about her? Maybe right now to have a little more weight on her. She's, I mean, she's springing, but I think if she had a little more bloom on her and look a little fresher, she might be able to compete a little bit better.
luck today. Thank you so much, sir. Morning, guys. This is James from the Ag Learning Center again. We've got a young man with us today. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from. Absolutely. So my name is Ryan Hess. I'm from Stephenville, Texas, and I'm currently serving as the National Junior Senator Trudis Association Vice President. All right. Ryan, it's nice for you to we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule this morning. I know you guys are busy out in the barn trying to get everything put together. Uh, and we do appreciate you taking time to sit with us this morning. Uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, the elephant in the room, okay. if you will. Uh, how has COVID-19 affected not only you as a, as a student and as an exhibitor, but and with regards to showing cattle and as far as your personal life. Okay, so COVID-19 has definitely affected not only just the United States, but also the globe. But on, but on a more personal level, it has affected my show career greatly. Uh, my family was actually down. We were traveling to the Houston Livestock Show to show there um, back in March, right before spring break. And this was before anything had really gotten out of hand. And we were showing there, um, we actually got down to the trailer lot trying to get into the show and we saw lots of stuff on social media about how there were a few cases in Houston. And so we started to look everywhere and try and see if the Houston stock show was actually going to happen. And before too long they actually canceled it while we were in the parking lot. And so we had to back out and head home and that was the very first time that it kind of affected us because we had seen um, on the news in other different parts of the globe where it has been affected them a lot more greater than the United States but that was the first time at the Houston Livestock Show where it personally affected me and from here on it also canceled the Austin Livestock Show and pretty much all other stock shows throughout the spring as well as FFA competitions. Okay. All right, uh What's the most important life lesson, if you could share to, to a young exhibitor, what's the most important life lesson that you've learned showing cattle? Okay, so that's a great question. Um, I really like to talk about what um, showing cattle has taught me in the past. And um, my family got into showing Santa Gertrudis just a couple years ago. Um, my older brother actually showed before me and then I followed right after him. And so we started our herd, we purchased a few calves. Um, and started to raise them up and just get a little bit of um, cattle for ourselves and help build our ranch. And so whenever we started, we didn't have the top of the line show cattle. We didn't necessarily win all the awards. And so for me, this was something that um, I had to learn. Um, I really enjoyed getting to build relationships um, and go to the shows for those relationships rather than go necessarily to win. Um, I didn't want to have a mindset that I would win when I went um, because then um, whenever I went home, I wouldn't enjoy what I was doing. Um, rather, um, whenever I went to those shows, I was looking to build connections and build relationships with not only people in Texas, um, but also other people um, down on the south and east coast of the United States as well. With COVID and everything that's going on, what do you see as the future of the beef industry? Absolutely. So one of the main things that's happened in 2020 is what they're calling the 2020 beef shortage. And so this has been affecting um, many different people and there are definitely a lot of articles about it um, out there. So I don't want to necessarily get into the technicalities of that, um, but it has been something that has brought attention to the beef industry. And so I think as agriculturists and as cattle ranchers, um, we need to get out there and advocate and educate more for the beef industry um, rather than just make those changes on our own because the people who are going to be passing those laws are going to, the, are going to be the people that are in the schools. So I think we need to take this to a younger level um, so whenever they get to um, be older, they're going to be the ones who are voting for our laws. Uh, what's your future look like? Um, so this next year I'm going to be starting my senior year of high school. Um, we don't know exactly yet if it will be in person or if it will be virtual, so we're hoping it will be in person. Um, but um, after that I plan on graduating high school and going to either Texas Tech University or Texas A&M University um, to pursue a degree in something related to agriculture. So I'm not too sure about the specifics of that yet, but I'm definitely one to continue my route in agriculture. This one's going to put you on the spot just okay. a little bit. I know you said you hadn't been in, hadn't been showing Senator Attorney's cattle very long. What is one thing you could, you would change about your show career with Senator Trudis cattle? Okay, so. Um, definitely whenever I got into the Senator Trudis um, organization and the association, I definitely saw that there were many other people and many other big breeders who I saw. And I was able to talk to them, get to know them, and just um, really see how they did things to implement that into my herd as well and just have kind of a foundation to my herd. So other than changing um, 
per se what I would change about my cattle. Um, I wouldn't necessarily change anything about my personal show career because like I was saying, um, those ribbons and those awards aren't necessarily what makes me enjoy the show career. It's those connections and relationships. And I wouldn't necessarily want to jeopardize that by doing awesome in the show ring and having a better future in the show ring. Appreciate your time this morning. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, so this is Texas Miss Independence, or as I like to call her, Indy. Uh, she's a bred and owned heifer from our ranch. Uh, actually, her sire was bred and owned by me, and her dam was bred and owned by my brother. So. Ryan, really good looking heifer. Absolutely. So one thing that I want, one thing that I would like to change about her is to just get a little more extension on her and make her um, walk a little easier, just so she can take better strides. And I'd also like to get a little more width between her pin bones, which is back by her. Good luck today, Ryan.